So spring has finally come once again, and that means we can finally start fishing again. When I first started fly fishing, I wanted to maximize my time on the river, so I basically read all the fly fishing books I can get my hands on. Here are the books that helped me the most. The first book I wanted to talk about is Reading Trout Water by Dave Hughes. What does uh, reading water really mean? It means identifying areas in the river where trout are likely to live. I feel this is mandatory reading for any fisherman that fishes in the rivers. Uh, the book is very detailed. In addition to the details, it offers great high quality photos of different scenarios you may encounter. Basically, I guarantee this book will make you a better fisherman and will maximize your efficiency in the water. Once again, that's Reading Trout Water by Dave Hughes. So the next book I wanted to talk about is How to Find Fish and Make Them Strike by Joseph D. Bates Jr. It was a pure fluke that I ran into this book. I was browsing through a garage sale, saw if I quarter and thought I would give it a read. There are many chapters on reading water, not only on rivers, but also in lakes and ponds. Uh, one chapter in particular that had me very interested was the lake turnover, which happens in the fall and in the spring. I didn't realize this event took place, so it was very educational. The, uh, the book talks a lot about game fish, uh, so pike, bass, pickerel, bluegills, trout, perch, uh, basically all the fish you'll find in North America. Um, it's not an actual fly fishing book, it's just a fishing book in general, but there's a lot of useful information that fly fishermen can obviously use. Uh, some chapters are reading water, finding fish, um, rigging bait, tying knots, and goes over a lot of the tendencies and environments of all the various species. And the book is an older book, probably somewhere in the 70s, uh, maybe even the 60s, so the images aren't going to be great. Uh, they're not as good as um, Dave Hughes reading Trout Water in terms of images, but they do offer lots of contrast, and you can see what's actually uh, you can see what actually is going on. Um, you'll probably have a very hard time finding this book brand new. So if you browse Amazon or eBay, that's probably your best place to find this book. That book again is How to Find Fish and Make Them Strike. The next book on the list is Dynamic Nymphing by George Daniels. If you arrived at this video because of my watch videos, don't mistake him for George Daniels, the inventor of the Coaxo escapement movement, but this is George Daniels, the competitive, competitive fly fisherman. This book is probably as technical as it gets for fly fishing. It explores the many types of nymphing, um, all the European styles, as well as the use of strike indicators. It touches on um, the use, I mean, I guess the recommended gear you required, how to rig up your rod, and pretty much gives step-by-step -step instruction on how to deliver your nymphs. So let's take a quick look inside. Um, it has great photos, lots of information, and the step-by-step -step pictures here on the right, yep, these are great. Like. He has great descriptions on the right there, on the right of the pictures, but in addition with these photos, it really makes things more clear. In addition to all that, he also offers lots of information on various imps and flies that he uses. This book has definitely improved uh, my nymphing, and I've been a lot more effective after reading it. Um, it has a wealth of information. You'll find yourself rereading chapters of this book all the time. The thing about nymphing is it's regarded as one of the easier ways to catch fish, but at the same time, it's probably one of the most complicated just because there's so many different ways to rig up uh, a nymph setup. Um, well, this book would definitely clear a lot of that up for you, so definitely give it a read. That's Dynamic Nymphing. Moving down the stack, the next book we have is Wet Flies by Dave Hughes. This is the second Dave Hughes book I have, and that's for good reason, because he's a great author. 
If you haven't fished wet flies before, definitely pick this book up. It will open a whole new world for you. Fishing wet flies is said to be a lost art form, but I don't see why, because fishing wet flies is extremely effective and it's very fun. Um, wet flies has probably become my favorite form of fly fishing. The book touches on two areas, the various kinds of wet flies and how to tie them. Um, this book gives great information on fly tying, and it pretty much got me started fly uh, tying my own flies. Uh, here are some examples. It has great step-by-step uh, -step instructions of various flies, lots of them. Half the book is probably just flies and how to tie them. Um, the other area it touches is just the technique. For those of fish streamers, it's basically the same thing, uh, but the book offers various methods on how to do it. Uh, maybe some things that you don't uh, know about or are not aware of. It's definitely a good read. That again is Wet Flies, probably one of my favorites. Moving on, the next book we have here is Strip Set by, once again, George Daniel. Uh, this is a dedicated streamer fishing book. Uh, since I was so impressed with the other book he had, Dynamic Nymphing, I had to pick this up. The book is meant for people who have streamer fished already. It's not really meant for the newbies, but there's no harm in reading it. He does a great job explaining situations, so you won't get totally lost when you actually start getting your head through this book. Um, like his other book, it's extremely technical. Um, basically, just like the other one, goes through lots of gear, lots of setup, and lots of technique. Um, I've only read this book once already. I plan to read it again when I head out this year. So, um, yeah, looking forward to that. Just some pictures of the book. Again, offers lots of information about his fly selection. That book again is Strip Set. The next book that we're looking at here is Hatch Guide for Western Streams by Jim Showmeyer. This is actually the very first fly fishing book I owned. It was recommended to me from me to me by a fly shop, um, and I'm very glad I got it. As you can see, I have plenty of notes in it and tabs and where to actually just for some quick reference. Um, it's basically a catalog of all the bugs where I fish. It goes over the various types of flies, midges, caddis, mayflies, stoneflies, whatever. It talks about the nymph, pupa forms, how long they stay in those stages for, hatch times and under which conditions. Then it goes into the adult phase and spinner phases. It really goes into detail. Uh, when first starting out, it was great because it offers so many great photos of how these critters actually look like in real life. Not only that, it offers um, pretty much a great set of invitations to use, as well as hook sizes. It's a small book and semi-water resistant, as you can see, um, so it's meant to be taken on your fishing adventures as a reference book. Highly recommended. Pretty much every fly fisherman should have a book like this out there. Um, great for tying flies, just to know what some invitations you can tie are. And if you're just interested in bugs, yeah, give it a read. That's Hatch Guide for Western Streams. And finally, my last book. This is the Back Road Map Book. Um, obviously, it's not a fly fishing book, but you get the idea. One of the greatest things about fishing is it makes you explore. And if you get one of these, it takes the guessing game out of exploring. They'll save you a lot of time. Where I live in southern Alberta, there are a ton of streams. and This book will help you find them. Uh, there's even a whole section on fishing. Let me pull it up. Yeah, so fishing adventures. It pretty much gives you um, the location of all these great places and directions on how to get there. It's pretty much um, a must-have. Be sure if you pick up one of these, you get the current edition, and this one's the third edition. You don't want to be driving out to a stream or a pond and realizing that it actually dried up in, in the last while. So this will definitely save you time. That's the back road map book. And that's everything. That concludes my list of reading material. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you read some of the books I recommended. 
And once again, thanks for watching.